This is Powell Marsh, a 4,300-acre wetland owned in part by the people of Wisconsin and in part by the Lac de Flambeau tribe. The Powell Marsh filters water downstream for several public and reservation lakes. This extensive watershed includes Dead Pike Lake, a 297-acre drainage lake of which over 60% is also public land for public recreation and natural habitat. In the 1950s, the DNR impounded 15 miles of this beautiful area with ditches and dikes to create a goose refuge for hunting. This impoundment has caused it to lose most of its natural filtering function. An inlet flowing to the south side of Dead Pike drains a portion of the marsh. A handful of people own property on this lake. They are the only ones trying to protect it from the byproducts coming from the marsh ditches. High levels of potential toxins shown in these clips are flowing into Dead Pike Lake and Little Bear Creek, a flowage on tribal land. These discharges produced by the dams include phosphorus, manganese, and iron flock. Despite ongoing citizen concerns and research findings in 2002, Wisconsin DNR entered into an unbid 25-year binding contract with Ducks Unlimited to manage the marsh. This included a $75,000 forfeiture clause if the management directives of Ducks Unlimited were not followed, regardless of local citizen or tribal concerns. Maintenance of the ditches and dikes were the priority for sustaining a goose population. Rules for public trust land require a master planning process every five years, including environmental impact studies. Public hearings are a required part of that process. Powell Marsh has not had a master planning process with the mandatory public hearing since 1979. I'm Gail Wolf, the chairman of the Water Quality Committee of the Dead Pike Lake Association. And for over a decade, we have been complaining about iron flock coming into our lake from the Powell Marsh. Using grant money, we were able to conduct a three-year scientific study of the problem which was done by Bar Engineering out of Minneapolis. Their results show that in addition to high levels of phosphorus, there are actually tons of iron flock that are being manufactured within the marsh and then flushed downstream, of course, into our lake. Bar Engineering recommends that our watershed be converted back to its original state to restore its natural function and filter out this pollutant. The department acknowledges the data, but claims that this extensive accumulation of sediment has no negative impact whatsoever upon the total ecosystem. We are presenting here statements from residents of Dead Pike Lake who are reporting firsthand their experience with deteriorating conditions on the lake. Pete and Nancy Gazetta have been certified by the DNR in Secchi Disc Readings, their work has confirmed the high levels of phosphorus and flock in the lake. We consider ourselves environmentalists. We started doing the Secchi Disc region for the Wisconsin DNR 17 years ago. And the reason we volunteered for it was because after only being on the lake for seven years, we noticed a tremendous difference in the clarity of the lake and what was happening and the color of the water and also how the fishing started to disappear. So we have been doing it for 17 years, and we checked the water in three different places in the lake. And we've also been doing the chemistry, and we checked that for in two different places. We do the oxygen, the phosphorus, and the temperature. I'm Dr. William Redig. I'm a family physician in northern Wisconsin for the past 40 years. I also own property on Dead Pike Lake. I've been concerned about the water quality in Dead Pike Lake and the toxicity of various chemicals and metals that come into the lake. I would also like to reference the Dead Pike Lake Management Plan, which I have a copy of in front of me. Uh, and in reference to a certain area of toxicological data, I'd like to quote from the uh, report itself. The aquatic toxicological data and the iron and water chemistry monitoring monitoring data collected at the inlet of Dead Pike Lake and in Dead Pike Lake itself indicate that iron is at levels that can cause acute and chronic toxicity to several different biologic niches 
in which the biota reside. What this really means is that the microorganisms in the lake are becoming affected by the iron and by the toxic components that come into the lake. Once the microorganisms are affected, they also provide food for other animals in the lake, other plants in the lake. This toxicity moves up the chain, can eventually get to humans, and affect everything. This takes time, but it has a definite effect all the way through. It needs to be addressed. I'm Bonnie Weisendotter from Freeport, Illinois. My husband Willie and I moved up here in 1971. I am a loon ranger with Loon Watch. I have been watching the loons for over and recording them to Loon Watch for over 25 years. We purchased land on Dead Pike Lake because we really like the quality of the water, the walleye fishing, the loons, and the serenity of the lake. Willie really Wise and Donner, we've been on the lake for a number of years. Uh, we've noticed over the time period when our kids were young, they were able to come down and catch crayfish all along the rocks. We live on the rocky side. Now we haven't seen one for years, and that's all gone. And that appears to be part of the problem with our loss of walleye also. I'm Pete Gazetta and I'm president of the Dead Pike Lake Association, which Gail Wolf and myself started around 12 years ago. We started the Lake Association at the recommendation of the DNR because we were very concerned about the changing conditions and the water quality in our, of our lake. We have been working with the DNR since this time, but at, as of this date we have very little success or cooperation in getting anything accomplished. It was the expanse of clean sandy beach. We call it the Florida sand beach that attracted us the most. We very seldom swim anymore because of the amount of flock that's in the lake. To see the, our lake bottom covered with flock is depressing. And to know that the major source of the pollution is coming from our own DNR and that it could be curtailed and is even more frustrating for us. The history of this area is ingrained in my family. It started with Frank Sherman in the late 1800s having a homestead on the Powell Marsh and later ran a hotel, an eatery, and a general store. Fishing experience with the lake was with a guide called Cal Parker. We stayed at his place in Powell and he, this was his kind of secret lake and he brought uh, me over here because he thought we could catch some fish and we did. And one of the things that impressed me about the lake was that when we didn't take any water along, when we got thirsty, he had a little tin cup that he just reached over the edge with and got a glass of water and we drank the water right out of the lake. It scares me. It scares me to think about that today with this water. Jean and Gail Wolf participated in the Bar Scientific Study as field researchers for two years. Their volunteer time served as matching funds on the grant. They collected water samples at the inlet and outlet points on the lake. Hi. Of all the people on the lake, I most certainly have been here the longest time. My name, maiden name is Pelkala, Phyllis Pelkala. It's a good Finnish name. We lived in Hurley, and my father purchased this property and built the cabin in 1948. I was six years old. I've been coming up here for 64 years. I enjoy kayaking, and I continue to go up into the bay on the south side of our lake and go up into the inlet, which has been deteriorating in the last 15 to 20 years. We have been on the lake for over 30, how many, 35, 40 years, and it wasn't like that when we first started. You could see the vegetation at the bottom of the lake. You could see the vegetation, period. But now we have a slimy fuzz that's a good two inches thick all over the vegetation. It's disgusting. 
and I really feel that this has been deteriorating our whole lake. That area is so covered with flock, it's almost inaccessible, and you realize that the vegetation is not visible. And it's not only the sight that's sickening, it's also the smell. It's disgusting. The iron breeds an iron bacteria, and that creates the slimy, multicolored film on the water. In hot weather, it actually begins to bubble and it stinks. We've tried everything we can to get the state people to recognize our problem. They continue to tell us that it's nothing unusual, that it's a natural phenomenon. I can tell you, it didn't used to be like this. We lived in the water and we always had plenty of fish to eat. Believe me, it has changed. And they f refuse to accept our grant study that was done by a very reputable company, Bar Engineering out of Minneapolis. But still they will not accept it because they do not want to admit that 15 miles of ditches and dikes that, that they have dug is the the main f purpose for we're getting flock into our lake. Even though research shows that tons of iron flock have been deposited in the lake, the Department of Natural Resources claims that there has been no negative impact upon the ecological system. Good afternoon, my name is John Hansen and I'm a lifelong resident of Manitowish Waters and I've been the town chairman here in Manitowish Waters for the past 13 years. And I've been aware of uh, the situation on Dead Pike Lake out here and the Palm Marsh. The point now where we have to look at what's there and the impact that it's having on the marsh and on particularly Dead Pike Lake, which is, I think, part of that ecosystem. So I know there's been a lot of studying done. There's been a bar engineering that's done studying with a grant from the DNR and the, the uh, EPA has been involved in it. So maybe the time has come to stop studying and start taking some action. The most important things that has to be done is to figure out a way to eliminate the degradation of Dead Pike Lake from the iron flock. And I don't think there's any issue with the fact that the flock is coming majorly from the Powell Marsh and that it's gotten substantially worse since the marsh was modified with the ditches. First you have to figure out a way to eliminate that flock coming in from the ditches to begin to start helping the lake. And then I think the next important thing is to look at how the marsh is being managed now and look at trying to return it to its more natural state. Our document said that the concentration of iron flock or iron in itself coming into the lake is so high that it poses a toxic threat to the lower strata biota, okay? So the statements of lay people need to be heard. In this instance, in fact, reports have even come from people trained in loon observations, certified in secchi disc techniques, some who have participated in two years of the scientific study, collecting samples, measuring water flows, collecting data and recording it. These are the people who have been involved, the canaries in the coal mine, if you will whose report, as you have heard, is a clarion call for concern. What you are seeing now is our effort to paddle through the water coming in from the marsh itself. This is our inlet from a watershed that no longer can filter out any contaminants. It shows the flock clumping around vegetation. In some instances, you can see the bubbling effect of the iron bacteria and smell the stench we assume that continued depositing will eventually fill this inlet, making navigation all but impossible. Regulatory action stems from the broad concept of the public's rights within the waters of the state, as defined within Wisconsin's public trust doctrine. For instance, statute NR 102.04 states, Substances that will cause objectionable deposits on the shore or in the bed of a body of water shall not be present in such amounts as to interfere with public rights in waters of the state. What could be clearer?